Hey, welcome to another Water Trek 360. I'm here on this hazy day at Captain's Cove, and I'm going to be checking out my new underwater housing for my iPhone 13 Pro. This is the Hot Dive H2. It has some real promise, so let's see how well it does. I apologize for my laryngitis and for the length of this review. It was like doing two reviews in one since Hot Dive provided two different apps that control the housing. This is the Hot Dive H2 Pro. I ordered directly from Hot Dive to ensure I got what I wanted. I have a top button of AFDC versus MF slash AF top button shown in the manual and online. I contacted Hot Dive. They ensured me this was the most recent version. AFDC is replacing the previous MFAF. They didn't tell me what the differences are between the two models. However, if you are not buying directly from Hot Dive, confirm that you are getting the AFDC model before you buy. Hot Dive 2 is a hard case. It has a full clear polycarbonate back viewing cover, a rotary wheel lock to open and close it, has a wide lens opening for a variety of phones, a front on-demand spotlight that can be set to 500 or 800 lumen that can last up to 100 minutes. It's a vacuum-based housing which, per hot dive, assists with anti-fogging and moisture control. It has two screw holes to choose from when mounting external filter attachments, has a right-handed trigger mechanism to initiate any action, it's button-oriented, managing the phone's cameras by an app, one furnished by Hot Dive or one by Deep Photo. It came with a nice carry case, cleaner cloth, lanyard, O-ring grease, manuals, a Type-C charging cable, and a spare O-ring. I got the lens kit as well, which also has a storage case. There's a lens holder bracket, a 37 millimeter red filter, an external .39x super wide angle wet lens that has a 72 millimeter red filter as well. There's two wide angle lens covers for the front and back glass and two screw knobs. Prior to using it, fully charge the battery. Plug the cable into the type C slot until it's cream. According to Hot Dive, the battery can last up to 20 days with normal usage. It took about three hours for mine to charge initially. Inside there is a white sticky nano pad. To use it, peel off the plastic seal that came with it. When you are ready, press the phone down on it and align it to where you want your phone to be. I suggest as high up as possible. If you don't, you can get a bright spot reflecting off the front glass from ambient light coming through the back of the housing, as you see here. Download the Hot Dive app from the App Store. Once loaded, go to Settings and make sure you put it into Airplane Mode. You set Auto Lock to Never and you shut off all notifications under Phone Settings. Turn on the Bluetooth switch in the upper right hand corner. Open the app, select To Dive. It will prompt you to select your device. If it doesn't show up at first, hit No Link, go back and hit To Dive again. Then select Pair for request. It will prompt you for accessing your photos, microphone, etc. Now you're in the app. I chose video mode. Prior to closing the case, always do a test video or photo before closing the housing to ensure the prompts don't come back. Then close the case and start the vacuum process. Screw off the vacuum cover, then press and hold the LED button on the bottom right. You'll hear a buzzing sound for about 20 seconds or so. Once the light turns green and the buzzing stops, then you're good to go. If the light stays red or the buzzing continues, pull the little blue plug on top, reinsert it, reopen and close the housing, and try again. Screw the vacuum cover back on, and you're ready to go. When done diving, unscrew vacuum cover, pull the blue plug, and then you can open the housing. There are two battery indicators. The one on the left is for the housing and the one on the right is for the phone. To navigate the app, use the menu to select base changes. The up down arrow to navigate through selections. The menu button and AFDC are normally the select buttons. The mode button sends you back. I set the app up for scuba mode versus free diving. So you press the menu, scroll to mode option at top, Press the menu twice, once to select and once to enable making the change. 
Press AFDC to toggle to scuba, then press mode twice to get back to the main screen. I then set my video size. You hit menu, you scroll to the video size, you hit menu again, scroll to the desired setting, hit mode twice to get out. You can choose HD 1080p, HD 720p, or UHD 4K. I left all the other modes as auto. You can change those following the same process. By pressing the mode button, you can cycle through whether you are in video mode or photo mode and whether or not you're using the front or back camera. The Hot Dive app only uses the iPhone's base 1X lens. The AFDC button toggles between auto and manual focus. If you press and hold it for three seconds, it gives you the depth and compass screen. To exit this screen, press the shutter lever. The LED button toggles the front light from low to high to off. The up-down arrow keys while you are in photo or video zooms in and out of the frame. Remember, the more you zoom, the grainier it gets. It also has a dive log available if you want to use it. The Hot Dive app will store your files as long name temporary files like this. For deep photo, again, download the app, keep the same iPhone settings as before, and follow the same vacuum procedures. You must forget the device in Bluetooth before connecting Deep Photo. It gets confused otherwise and won't work. Pair the device and then do a test video or photo prior to closing the housing to prevent any prompts. Like Hot Dive, it has a remaining battery indicator. The one on the left is the iPhone, the camera icon is the housing. App navigation is a little easier. Buttons align to the feature next to it. On one end, AFDC is mode, and down arrow is gallery. The first thing I wanted to do is bump up the FPS from 30 to 60. If you go to mode and select 4K video, you see it only showed 30 FPS. I went back, selected camera, selected lens, and then selected wide. Then, once I navigated back to mode and then video 4K, you can now see 60 FPS is also available. The one clear difference between these apps is that Deep Photo actually uses the different lenses of the iPhone. You have triple and ultra wide, which use the wide angle lens. Wide uses the primary 1x lens. Tele uses the zoom lens. And Face uses the selfie camera. And that's a clear improvement. I'm not going into all the features, exposure, focus, ISO, even zoom. Since this app is easier to use, I trust you can figure it out. So the good. It is rated to 240 feet, which is impressive. The primary casing is aluminum, not polycarbonate. It's sturdy and has a great design. I like that the external lens attachments are movable for additional flexibility. It's got an auto vacuum pump mechanism instead of manual. It has built-in batteries versus using double or triple A, so it's environmentally friendlier. It can fit multiple phone sizes, has several tray mount screws on the bottom. It comes with some nice storage cases and backup stuff, and has a lot of accessories that are available. And now the bad. This is the personal preference, but it had no top shoe mount. I used them to attach smaller cameras like a GoPro. I used some marine epoxy to add one centered over the camera opening. Be careful to align it so that it doesn't impede opening or closing the back face or block moving the lens holder attachment. The vacuum pin is tiny and hard to get out. It is going to get lost. I spent five minutes looking for it after dropping it on my blue carpet. I would suggest ordering a spare up front. They provide red filters, but not yellow or magenta. Those filters for a 37 millimeter or a 72 are a bit harder to find. I bought a 37 to 62 millimeter adapter in order not to buy a new filter. The position of the built-in light is a bit odd. It's not directly above the opening, but off to the right. So be aware, your shadows will always be on the left when shooting with it. The Nano Sticky Pad. After removing the clear initial packing film, don't put it back on. 
I did, thinking I would protect the sticky pad from lint, etc. Once I did, I couldn't get it off without extreme difficulty. I thought I ruined it. As you can see, I have lint and microfiber cloth remnants on it. I contacted Hot Dive. Their response, clean it with water. I did. No help. The associate said they may make replacements and would investigate. If I get any response from Hot Dive on this or any question I pose to them, I will put an update in the description. Neither one of the apps has really any kind of documentation or tutorial and uh, are not very intuitive. Both apps are a bit buggy with Deep Photo being the better of the two. While using the Hot Dive app, the back screen keeps going black. You need to tap the trigger key in order to bring it back so you can see what you are videoing. The app navigation is a bit cumbersome and slow, especially when swapping modes or settings. Deep Photo also randomly stopped, and most importantly for Deep Photo, I have to forget the device each time I use it, regardless if I successfully used it before, even between dives. Hot Dive has an app log feature, but all my logs disappeared. They showed up at the end of the dive, but I can never find them in my profile. I've contacted Hot Dive on this as well. This housing has longer breakdown and setup times compared to others I've used. Regardless of the vacuum process, both apps have a cumbersome pre-dive setup. Camera battery usage. Both Hot Dive and Deep Photo apps drain the phone's battery faster than I had anticipated. I have other underwater housings that don't use an app, just the iPhone's own capabilities, and I've been easily able to get six plus hours of video time on a dive boat. You can see how quickly each of these apps drain the iPhone 13 battery. Something to remember if you are planning a dive vacation on a liveaboard. And now the big uglies. It's challenging enough neither app can do video modes like cinematic, slow-mo, etc. or action mode with the new iPhone 14. Worse, the Hot Dive app bypasses all of the phone's stabilization AI. At first, I wasn't sure if it was me. The video was terrible, choppy, grainy. Initially, I had it set to HD 1080p. I reset it to UHD 4K, same issue. Hot Dive's UHD 4K was H.264 versus the more efficient HEVC or H.265. I would have thought I would have had more issue with Deep Photos codec PAL. PAL is mostly used in Asia. My understanding, PAL movies are sped up by almost 4% to make up for frame differences. That may explain the choppiness in the Hot Dive videos, if the app is doing that internally. My base iPhone videos have BT2020. Granted, in Final Cut Pro, I have to swap the codec from HDR709 to HLG709, but I think the color's better. I even tested AirDrop with the all data options on. I tried setting camera option to show PAL formats and recorded at 25 FPS PAL. I couldn't see a real difference. While Deep Photo has a better workflow and uses all three lenses, at this time it requires a subscription fee of $24 annually or a monthly fee of $250. A bigger issue is the anti-fog film. It's already scuffed, not by me trying to clean it, but from normal everyday contact with the phone. It only took two dives. Additionally, I got fogginess in every test video. What was it? Did I need a desiccant? So what's the purpose of the vacuum? On average, in my tests, the water temperature was only 72 degrees, yet I had the same results with both apps. It turns out it's the anti-fog filter that's creating the fog. I then tested both my iPhones outside the housing and then inside the housing, shooting the same messy workspace. As you can see, the hot dive video had a distinct haze, especially around lighting. I contacted Hot Dive on how to address the anti-fog issues. Can I remove the film, replace it? How do I fix it? If it's permanent, how do I use this housing without degraded video? To date, no answer. Lastly, I purchased this housing knowing I was going to upgrade to the iPhone 14 Pro. Hot Dive site states specifically it can support the iPhone 14 Pro. 
Apparently, they looked at the base length, width, and depth of the phone's case. They did not take into account the camera's bump up. On the 14 Pro, the cameras extend 4.18 millimeters beyond the rest of the body. So while the length and width are relatively similar to the 13, the overall thickness with camera is over three quarters of a millimeter greater on the iPhone 14 Pro. That was just enough for the Nano Sticky Pad to no longer work, no matter what I did. Again, I used my 3D printer and I made my own sleeve for the 14 Pro. While it works, the 14 Pro still scuffs the anti-fog film, just in different places. I retested in shallow water with the 14 Pro, only 25 feet or so, and the O-ring seal held. But with the additional pressure against the back housing and the front glass, due to the additional camera bump out, I'm not sure whether the 240 foot depth rating is still viable. Once again, I apologize for my laryngitis. Well, that was a long review. If you are still watching, I thank you for sticking with it. As always, I am not supported by any manufacturer. I do this because it's my passion. I try to be objective, give useful information reviewing any tool so that you are informed. So, let's do the ratings for the Hot Dive H2 Pro. Depth gets a 10. 240 feet is awesome. From a durability standpoint, it gets an 8. The tiny vacuum pin, the nano sticky pad issues, and most importantly, the anti-fog membrane, which degrades under normal use, were impacts. The next three ratings get split depending upon which app you are using. For ease of use, with Hot Dive, it gets a 6, and Deep Photo gets a 7. The long setup and breakdown times, app navigation and sync up challenges, lots of post-production work with the Hot Dive app, all impacted this rating. Versatility with the Hot Dive app gets a five and with Deep Photo it gets a seven. The lack of shoe mounts, the shortened phone battery life, the bypassing of basic iPhone capabilities, subscription fees, poor image quality due to the anti-fog film and the Hot Dive app itself, and then lastly, that the iPhone 14 Pro doesn't fit the housing as advertised, were crushers. Cost. Hot Dive app, it gets a 4. With Deep Photo, it gets a 6. I spent well over $400 on this housing with some add-ons. All the aforementioned issues hurt the rating. So, my overall ratings for the Hot Dive H2 Pro with the Hot Dive app, is a 6.6, .6. with Deep Photo, it's a 7.6. I'm clearly disappointed. Hot Dive started with one of the best external designs I've seen. Their app developers got distracted. They added dive log, depth, meters, compass. Most divers already have those tools, only better. Until they get rid of the anti-fog film, make a replaceable sticky pad, a housing that truly fits the iPhone 14 Pro, and build a non-subscription app that lets the phone do what it's supposed to do, I won't be using it. Guys, don't override the phone. Enable the phone. If you had done that, this housing should have been a 9. Fix it. Well, that was a harsh review. <laughs> Do check out some of my rec videos. Stay tuned. I am working on iPhone 14 reviews and some follow-ups on comparable housings. Please stay safe when diving and snorkeling. Enjoy your time in the water. And as always, until the next time, go explore, get wet.